Hi everyone, good morning. Well, today's the day we're going to hook up the new batteries and get this project finished. Uh, let me just update you real quick on the last couple of things I did. Um, so all of the connections have been torqued down. Everything is tight. Uh, I did have to modify these covers a little bit. They didn't have enough room uh, because of these big 4 aught lugs. There wasn't enough room for the cover to go on there. So I just got my Dremel tool and sanded, um, you know, shaved them back a little bit. I uh, had to do it this side also. I don't know if you can see how you see how thick that leg is right there. That one. And then that one's a little bit thinner because I had to take some material off on this side and then both sides up there so that the lugs would fit. Had to do it on the bottom. Had to do it on the black one also. I also, you know, got all my cables snugged up on the wall. Uh, this is going to be my inverter negative, so I've got that attached here, so it actually comes up really nicely and will come right down to the inverter, you know, right about in this general area. So I'm comfortable with everything. It's all hooked up. Um, so we're going to be connecting up the batteries. Uh, I've also got to reconnect my crank batteries. Uh, the ample start that I installed, if you remember that. Uh, so that will come online as soon as both battery systems are hooked up. You know, the solar will take over and the ample start will keep my crank batteries topped up, which, you know, I've had issues with that when the truck sits for extended periods of time. A lot of you know what I'm talking about there. We're going to be connecting up, you know, tying these batteries all together, installing and connecting the positive and negative. And then once that's all done, you know, they'll still be turned off. They won't have any power going up into the system because I have to connect. This is the panel wire that goes up into the charge controller. So what I did was just folded a piece of tape over it. So once I've got the shelf in, then I can turn the batteries on, flip the breaker, and then install this wire, and that will bring the solar online. So I have to do all that in a specific order because once the shelf is in here and the inverter is in its position, you can't reach that. So I'll have the shelf in, I'll have the inverter all wired up, but just kind of slid to the right a little bit, pop that one wire in, and everything will come online. And then I can just slide the inverter back over into its final position, and then we're going to screw it down into the shelf. Then. Once I've got all that done, everything will be up and running. I've done everything I can so that this final step here, that there's not going to be any failures. You know, I've made sure all my wires are long enough to reach the inverter because once I, once I start into this final step, I'm, I'm not stopping. We're going to get it all done today. It's a nice day out. 65 degrees with 70% humidity. So it feels really pleasant out. I'm in the shade. What more could you ask for? So let's get this done. All right, so I've got my, these are the battery connect cables that tie all the batteries together. Here's the hardware. You now you can see I have some longer ones where I need them, where it's going through three lugs. So where the, where the main feeds attach to the batteries, I got to use the longer bolt. These are long enough to go through two lugs, but I'd like to see more thread protruding. So that's what you've got sticking through when you're going through two lugs. Now there, uh, there is a split washer and it will compress. And you know, I've used them just like this before for years and they're fine. So the next step is on my list because I listed this all out exactly how I had to do all of this stuff because it all has to be done just right. I go inside, you bark. I go to work on the truck, and you bark. I don't know what, what was that? I don't know what you want. I have no idea what you want. I love him. But man, when I'm out here trying to do something that's really serious, and he's barking for some reason, see? 
All right, I just got the crank batteries for the truck hooked back up. So you all know there's one that's under the hood and then the second one is in the cabinet there. So those are connected. And as soon as I connected the first one, I heard beep from inside here. And you can't follow me everywhere, Lefty. I already let you go in the truck and then you wanted to come back out. Go ahead. Scoot over. Nobody wants to look at that side of you. So this thing made a beep just like it's supposed to. And that red light flashing is on the house battery because the house batteries aren't connected yet. So this thing is doing exactly what it's supposed to so far. Connected the crank battery, so that's done. So next is wire batteries. So let's do it. So these are the plastic caps that came with the Litime batteries. So once you've got your bolts down through there, these pop right on so that the highest point on the battery is gonna be this, uh, it feels like uh, it's not rubbery, but it's a flexible plastic and it has the hex cut out in it So it kind of snaps right on to the bolt head the, These are the first batteries that I've had of the three different types that I've had in here that came with these kind of protectors So thank you Litime for thinking about that So I've got my safety glasses on I have a fire extinguisher sitting right behind you guys uh, Just in case I don't want to over dramatize this but just in case so the first connection up here so a single this is just a single wire so I'll use one of the shorter bolts and then this second connection is going to be three so I'm going to use one of the longer ones so it's going to be one wire second wire and then the main feed okay Okay, and then over to here. Yeah, 13 millimeter on the long ones. Last one up here. Okay. All right. Now let's get these caps on. the shelf that goes over here I attached a sheet of rubber to the underside of that shelf uh, a piece about this big you know so obviously this is the only area where the battery connections are um, but there's a piece of rubber the full width of the shelf so if it were for some reason happened to fall it's rubber and it would land these are the highest points but that shelf i've got supports planned for that that's a whole nother step to this project once we get this all done and the shelf is in then i'm going to build the supports for it i am going to put supports under the shelf uh, just to be extra sure so there's no way that it can come down all right that step is done let me go check my list and see what's next I just moved these front cleats on these two straps. I didn't like how they were kind of getting pinched. You know, they were closer to the terminals and they were just kind of getting pinched underneath the cables. So I scooted these over about two inches. So they're out of the way of the cables. Now they're, they're free. Um, so I feel better about that. So now it's time to put the shelf in. There's my rubber. 
stylish purple. That's just what I happen to have. I used uh, just some spray glue and that is not coming off of there. <laughs> He's uh, inside the truck. He's back there on my bed, sitting there, barking. Okay, buddy. It's just the neighbors. All right, nuts, bolts, washers. Now, this is my least favorite part. <laughs> this just sucks. Boy, I wish there was an easier way to do this. Just not. I do with the other bolt. Your room. So next is rubber mat, inverter, get the inverter wired, hook up the charge controller, turn everything on. We're very close. Okay. Add shelf. Crossed off. Woo. That baby's heavy. That's why I'm going to put some supports under it. This thing is heavy. I've got to get it all wired up while I still have access to that wire, but I can't plug that wire in until I turn everything on. You don't want to smoke your charge controller by having input with no output. Yeah, I took a picture of my inverter wiring before I tore it apart. So we've got, and I did label these, this is in. It's just like that green, black, white, just like they're still laid out. They've been that way for four plus years. So green, black, white, white, black, green. So those are done. All right, so the last connection is this one. Okay, yep, we reach. Ah, glasses are fogging up, I can't see. Still don't have any power turned on yet, remember. Okay. You know what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a quick second, a little break here, just to go over everything because the next step is turning everything on. So I had these zip tied up to the wall just to keep them out of the way. There we go. So now this can go in here. That's in there. Okay, now battery temp sensor. Do we have enough room for the LCD remote port? Yes, we do. Okay, so wire inverter slid to the right. Done. Now next is turn on that switch, flip the breaker and then install that wire. We're down to it now. So I'm gonna take a couple minutes here and just go over everything one more time and just make sure that I'm, I'm ready to go because the next thing is actually turning everything on. Then I'm gonna have to go inside and reprogram the Victron battery monitor. 
uh, that it's an 800 amp hour instead of 400 and if I'm not mistaken I believe the charge controller also needs to be uh, adjusted to be 800 amp hour so I'm gonna have to jump inside and do those two all right I just threw the main switch I'm gonna go inside the rig and make sure we got power which I'm sure we do I mean everything is wired just gonna double check <laughs> Okay, all is good. We've got power in there. The shunt came online, the battery monitor. No. <coughs> Left. Come here, buddy. So next is... So this should come online reading the batteries, which it is. And now I gotta put in this wire. we go. Did you see the green light come on? Oh, that's good. We got solar. Look at that. Alright. So I've got to go inside and change some settings. Oh, so far so good. Everything's working. Yeah, they're taking a charge fast. It's midday, we've got a lot of sun up there. So let me jump inside and see if I can remember how to program <laughs> these, uh, these devices. Hey, so I was just out here working on the truck and the mailman pulled up and walked over to me and handed me this box. This is one of the giveaway gifts that I shipped out uh, the last week of July, and it says, return to sender. He's like, there's no postage on the whole thing. So they had this, attention mail customer, this is being returned. The bizarre part is I take all of these to the post office, and they ship them. They print out the label, I pay them, they stick the label on the box, and it gets shipped. That's how I always do them. Where's the sticker? So I'm, I'm looking at the guy like... I'm not understanding what you're telling me. And it's not our regular mailman. It must be a guy must be on vacation. It's a young guy. And uh, he's like, yeah, there's no postage on it. And I'm like, I ship these at the post office. And he's like, he goes, you got a receipt? And I said, Ugh. so I just went up and looked. Score. I got the receipt. The receipt shows Mitchell, Indiana, 47446. It's got the weight. And there it is, Mitchell, Indiana, 47446, three pounds, 9.3 ounces. It was supposed to deliver the 27th. We're going to get in the car and go right over to the post office with this box and say, what the heck is going on here? It's like they took it from me, and but then didn't stick the sticker on it and put it over in the outgoing bin. I, I'm so thankful that I put the return address here because many times... Like when I ship out stickers, because we're all over the place when I ship stickers to people and they're just in a little regular envelope, I just put TCM up in the corner, the Campulance Man, with no return address. Thankfully, on all these packages that I ship, all of the giveaway gifts, I put the return address here on them, and I'm glad I did. Otherwise, that one would not have made its way back to me here and would have been lost forever. So thank goodness, and thank goodness for... Benjamin who won this thing I can I'm gonna go reship it I'm, I'm, I'm just perplexed I don't get it <laughs> okay I just uh, went inside and adjusted the charge controller so it knows it has 800 amp hours I adjusted the Victron battery monitor via Bluetooth so it knows there's 800 amp hours I didn't change any of the other settings so it already hit 14.2, so I have my charge controller set up um, per my Chin's batteries that were in there. And now, now I have the Litime. Thank you again, Litime, for providing these batteries for us. 
So I have it, uh, it'll go up to 14.2 for 60 minutes and then it drops down to 13.8 and just holds it there for the rest of the day. If you were around whenever I installed the chins, I think it was two, two winters ago, uh, those were my first lithium batteries and I installed them. I put the settings in that they recommended and started getting uh, an error on my charge controller battery overvolt and I didn't know what I'd never seen that before you know so the batteries were going too high of a voltage and they were shutting themselves off gel batteries that I had before they don't do that kind of stuff so I was like what the heck's going on I was freaking out I didn't know what to do I posted on a forum and some guys jumped on real quick and answered me and they said uh, 14.6 volts which is what the chins recommended for the charge uh, they said only only the the most balanced of lithium batteries can take that high of a charge voltage um, so they said lower it down to like 14 14.1 and then put it up if it takes that go to 14.2 if it takes that you can go to 14.3 and so I did that and boom that was the fix and I ended up at 14.2 and that's how I had the chins for the last whatever it was. It's been a year and a half, I think, um, since I put those in. And as I've read more and more and learned more about lithium batteries, a lot of people say, like, just to get them up to 13.8 and leave them there. So I, I put them to the 14.2 for just one hour, and then they drop down to the 13.8. And so it already hit 14.2. These have been on for, I mean, it was within not even 10 minutes because they were fully charged because I charged each of these batteries individually before I brought them out here to install them so they were already fully charged so to go from fully charged to 14.2 it took like eight minutes uh, and then as soon as it hit 14.2 the charge controller dropped the amps down and just gonna maintain it at 14.2. So these might, these lit times might take a higher charge and I may play with that, you know, take it up to 14.3, 14.4 and see what happens. But for right now, I'm gonna leave it as it is. I'm gonna spend the rest of the afternoon just keeping my eye on this. I've got the Max Air fan running in there, lights are on, everything's, everything's working well. The only thing, the last thing I've gotta check is I'm just gonna go turn on the inverter and plug something into the wall outlet and make sure that my AC power is working, which I'm sure it is. It's all the same wiring. It's all hooked back up uh, to the inverter. So I'm sure it's fine. And the last things on my list are to slide the inverter over into its final resting position, screw it down to the shelf, and then add some supports under the shelf. Uh, and that's it. So those of you that have been here with me through this whole install and because this was a big project for me and the way that you know the way that my soup works up in my noggin here I had to plan all this out and you know this list of steps right here is just yesterday and today all the final little things that I had to do in a specific order so that I didn't frazzle my charge controller and that everything was put together perfectly and so far everything is working just like it should I have no issues right now so I'm just gonna keep my eye on it for the rest of the day I gotta build my confidence up in the system I think it's actually wired up better now than it ever has been using those bus bars um, you know double the power now I'm curious to see how having 800 amp hours is going to change our lives and our power usage. I don't, I don't know that it will change what we do a lot. Uh, we've just got a lot more power available, um, which means, you know, if we have a couple of cloudy days in a row, I don't have to worry so much, right? I don't have to get out the generator per se and and charge the batteries up. Because uh, I've got I've got a, a, a deeper bench now. I've got more power to last through those times when we might not have a lot of solar power. So if you stuck around through this whole thing, I appreciate that. I know this was a long, drawn-out project. I'm happy right now. Everything is working. Thank you all for being here. Everybody take care, be safe, and we'll see you again really soon. With a lot of power.
What are you doing? Huh? I'm sorry, what? Hmm? I know you smell my coffee. Starting to get spazzy. <laughs> what? Hello? What? It's it's still over there. You don't have to worry about your happy box. It's still there. Oh no. No. I got a full cup of coffee over here. That's enough. That's enough. That's my boy. Be good puppy. Okay. Let me finish my coffee. That's a good boy. Hey. Go. Dude. Hey, 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 hey. Um, can I help you with something? I didn't understand that. English. Okay. You want something? Huh? Can I get you something from here? Oh. Oh. Get you a minty? Mm -hmm. hmm? What? Mm. Oh, such a polite sir. Sits. Such a polite one. Mm. I'm trying. It's hard with the camera. Mm -hmm. Dad, ditch the camera. Oh, I got it. Oh. Does it smell good? Come on. There you go. Okay. Enjoy.